are many questions that are unanswered. And the answers, frankly, that you've given this morning are not satisfactory to me. Why is it that the administration still refuses to provide the full text of emails regarding the deletion of references to al-Qaeda and terrorism in the talking points? Why do we care? Because if the classified information had been included, it gives an entirely different version of events to the American people. You're going to the American people and tell them what happened, then you ought to have your facts straight. Senator John McCain confronting Secretary of State Hillary Clinton about the Benghazi attack, the attack that left four Americans, including Ambassador Chris Stevens, dead. Why was Senator McCain not satisfied with Secretary Clinton's answers? We asked him. Senator, nice to see you, sir. Thank you, Greta. Today you asked questions of Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. I know that the two of you are friends, but uh, you were quite rough on her. Well, I hope I wasn't rough on her, but I think we need to make it clear that there are many unanswered questions here months after the tragic loss of four brave Americans. And we still don't know what shaped the talking points that uh, Ambassador Rice used. We still don't know when the president was briefed. We still don't know uh, why the uh, survivors who were who were uh, flown to Germany were not asked the next day whether it was a spontaneous demonstration or not. We still don't know why the president continued for at least two weeks afterwards to say that he didn't know whether it was a terrorist attack or not and of course the exchange that he had with uh, Mitt Romney in their debate where he said he had called it a terrorist attack when he hadn't. Uh, but there's so many questions that remain unanswered. Why were so many warnings ignored by the State Department? Why was it when the person in charge of the detail of 16 people objected and requested to stay because of the uh, failure in the security there around uh, the consulate? Why didn't they heed the warnings when there was an attack on the British ambassador? None of these questions have been asked to the satisfaction, frankly, of any of us who have paid close attention. But did you get them today? I don't know if you had a chance no. to watch all the hearings, or even in the House, is that a lot of it is members of Congress talking, and they get to the end of their time, and then they have to uh, get the answer in writing later because they've been either praising her or roughing her up. I mean, there really wasn't sort of like, you know, what do you know, when do you know it, who was there. There was, there's very little of that in the hearings. Well, first of all, it's not uh, too surprising given members of Congress. But second of all, uh, you only have five minutes. So I had to lay out in, in my five minutes those questions that remain unanswered. Because well, with all due Ryan respect to the Secretary of State, she basically sort of said that everything had been taken care of. Uh, Greta, why in the world should we not know what the emails were when they decided what particular language that Ambassador Susan Rice would use talking to the American people. Why would Ambassador Rice say Al-Qaeda has been decimated? We know Al-Qaeda hasn't been decimated. We know it's on the rise. Why well, don't, why doesn't, well, I realize that you're in the minority here, but um, uh, Ambassador Rice Talk to senators behind closed doors. She has not been summoned to the House where the majority, Republicans are the majority. So none of this is, you know, she has those answers and she hasn't been summoned. I'm not sure how many answers she has. Because but she could say the why she was chosen or the who made her points? The president said in defense of her, she doesn't know anything about Benghazi. That was the president's statement. Uh, she was given a set of talking points. Now she should have known better. She should have checked them out the same way that Colin Powell should have known better when he told the world that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. But uh, I don't think she has many of the answers. The answers lie within the State Department, the CIA, and the White House. Who changed the talking points and why? Because the talking points, if it had included the classified information they had, would have depicted a very different version of events than the ones that Ambassador Rice told the American people. And I guess finally, why would we ever think that people bring mortars and rocket-propelled grenades to spontaneous demonstrations? I mean, on the face of it. And, you, this cannot be ignored, the fact that this was all in the heat of a presidential campaign. A president who was campaigning saying, Bin Laden is dead and Al-Qaeda is on the run. 
we know that's not true. As there's sort of a passing of the torch in the next couple of days or weeks between Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and soon to be Secretary of State John Kerry, I'm curious um, your thoughts on how Secretary Clinton has done as Secretary of State and your thoughts about John Kerry as he goes forward. First of all, I, uh, Secretary Clinton is admired and respected around the world. She and I have been friends for many years. We used to travel together. I think there's a drinking contest in there, we were told. Is that false? False. <laughs> right. And uh, so I, I have, uh, I, I admire the fact that she is admired throughout the world and a very effective Secretary of State. I also think that John Kerry will do a, a, a credible job as Secretary of State. He has a world of experience. And John Kerry and I don't agree on a lot of issues. But we have a relationship which was forged years ago. And so I have confidence that he will carry out the president's uh, agenda and serve the president. Now, I wouldn't nominate, very frankly, as friendly as we are, I wouldn't nominate him to be uh, Secretary of State. I would have my own selection. But I, I respect the president's selection in this case. I do have significant and serious questions for uh, Senator uh, Hagel. And that'll be coming up soon. Yes, it'll be coming before the uh, Armed Services Committee next week. On the topic of the Pentagon, Secretary of Defense, uh, Secretary of Defense Panetta has said that he's going to lift the ban on women in combat. Mm -hmm. What's your thought about that? I think that I respect that judgment. I would s s emphasize that there are certain specialties that require certain physical capabilities. And I would not bar women, for example, SEAL teams, okay? I would not bar them from them, if that's his decision. But I hope that they would have to measure up to the same physical standards because these, for the SEALs are the best example. They're a small unit. They have to depend on each other. And I'm not saying that women can't perform that way. I just hope we would keep the same standard requirements uh, for screening and eligibility to be a member, particularly of some of our elite military units. All right, now to the logjam issue in Washington. Uh, one of my colleagues, Chad Pergram, has confirmed that Speaker Boehner told a group of Republicans, now this is on the House side, that President Obama's focus is to annihilate the Republican Party. Is that the collective viewpoint here in the Republicans in the Senate or not? Greta, I've seen a number of presidents in their second terms. I've seen President Reagan and President Clinton in their second term and President Bush uh, Jr. in his second term. And there was always an outreach, uh, starting with the inauguration. Look, we've got to work together. Obviously, it was a very confrontational speech that the president gave that I think would have been more appropriate if he feels that way for the State of the Union as opposed to inaugural speech. Um, I think you can lend credence to the belief that the President of the United States wants to regain a majority in the House of Representatives, and in order to achieve that, he has to uh, uh, split the Republican Party, particularly in the House. And so I regret that, the, that I didn't hear one word from the President about it's time we all sat down and worked together. and address these issues that are confronting the nation. But it is what it is. That means that we're in a, for a pretty rough couple of years. It's interesting. You mentioned that you have a re good relationship with Senator John Kerry, and it didn't sort of miss my observation that when there was a discussion about what, what to do about taxes recently is that Senator Vice President Biden, who was a U.S. Senator here for many years, has many relations up here, relationships up here with the Senate, he was dispatched. The relationships are important in Washington, isn't it? Relationships are important. I have a very good relationship with the Vice President. He's one of the most likable guys in Washington. He and I strongly disagree on, on many issues, but it's good to be able to pick up the phone and, and talk to somebody. The, the trick around here, and it took me a long time to learn it, is that you can disagree with people, and you can disagree. God knows Ted Kennedy and I used to go at it. But as long as you don't get personal, as long as you don't attack someone's character and integrity, then you can shake out. I'll never forget, I had a huge fight one day with Ted Kennedy on the floor, and we were yelling at each other, and we walked off, and he, and he looked at me and said, we, we did pretty good, didn't we? <laughs> that, that was what it was like doing business, and I learned a lot from him. Can you do that with President Obama? I haven't had that much to do with President Obama. I've been over to the White House once in the last four years, 
and the meeting we had was very uh, pleasant uh, and he said he was going to get back to me on a number of issues and I never heard from him again. So it's not that we've had a bad relationship, we've just had no relationship. Senator, thank you, sir. Thank you.